God! Real good solid fall. Way to go. Jared! Jensen! Outstanding! That was just great. Supernatural, scene one, echo, take one, tail slate, marker. <laughs> Idgits. You are idgits. Hey, Aspot. Hey, Aspot. John and Mary, husband and wife, bringing home a brand new life. His name is Sammy. I'm Big Brother Dean. The perfect family, or so it seems. The Dean. Had begun, it believed Sam was the chosen one. It burned my mother and it cursed my brother, leaving us in tears. Now to the right here is Stars Hollow. It's the setting for the television series Gilmore Girls. And if we're lucky, we might even catch one of the show's stars. Come on. Because I like to think that over these years, we've grown closer. That you don't think of me as director Bob or executive producer Bob Singer, but as Uncle Bob. Wait, you're kidding. So the character in the show, Bobby Singer... Kind of a douchebag, names a character after himself. Oh, that's not right. You're asking questions like the building's haunted. Like those guys from the books. What are they called? Uh, supernatural. Two guys use fake IDs with rock aliases, hunt down ghosts, demons, vampires. What are their names? Uh, Steve and Dirk? Uh, Sal and Dane? Sam and Dean? That's it. You're saying this is a book? Books. It was a series. Didn't sell a lot of copies, though. Kind of had a more of an underground cult following. We know you've had it hard during the crippling writer's strike. Lazy fat cats. Who needs writers when you got guys like us? But you guys aren't supposed to be there. You're not in this story. Yeah, well, we're making it up as we go. Of course, you are the lovely actress who plays Ruby. <laughs> and you are uh, in Jared's house uh, because you two are... Uh, Married! You married fake Ruby? Why are you using me as bait? I mean, it's kind of what you're for, isn't it? <sighs> Sam and Dean approach the rundown. Approach the ramshackle house with trepidation. Did they really want to learn the secrets that lay beyond that door? Sam and Dean traded soulful looks. Then, with determination, Dean pushed the doorbell with forceful determination. Ugh. You Chuck Shirley? The Chuck Shirley who wrote the Supernatural books? Maybe. Why? I'm Dean, this is Sam. The Dean and Sam you've been writing about. Oh my god. That, 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 that's, uh, that's... That's the mystery machine. We're not just in any cartoon. We're in Scooby-Doo. Let me tell you my story. Let me tell you everything.
What makes a story work? Is it the plot, the characters, the text? The subtext? And who gives a story meaning? Is it the writer? Or you? Tonight, I thought I would tell you a little story and let you decide. We now return to Supernatural. Okay, so you can pop in tomorrow morning. Yes. I'll just... wait here then. Castiel. Haven't seen you all season. You the cavalry now? I need you to get a message to Sam and Dean. Okay? Look, Mr. Edlin. Yes, I'm a fan, but I really don't appreciate being mocked. I know that Supernatural is just a book, okay? I know the difference between fantasy and reality. Becky, it's all real. I knew it! <sighs> um, says you're from Texas. Really? Yeah. And, uh, oh, says you were on a soap opera. What? Well, if I didn't have cancer, and I wasn't married, and I had plenty of money, would you, would you want to run away with me? Money? What, do you think I really care about money, Nicole? I care that you're healthy. I'm no quitter, Eric. I, I... Welcome to the first annual Supernatural Convention. Uh, at 3.45 in the Magnolia Room, we have the panel, Frightened Little Boy, The Secret Life of Dean. And at 4.30, there's the homoerotic subtext of Supernatural. Uh, oh, and of course, the big hunt starts at 7 p.m. sharp. Yeah! Yeah! <sighs> I'll have to send you some fake links later. What are they doing? Um, kids these days call it hugging. Is that in the show? Oh, no. Siobhan and Kristen are a couple in real life. Although we do explore the nature of Destiel in Act 2. Sorry, what? Oh, it's just subtext. But then again, you know, you can't spell subtext without S-E-X. I don't understand. Me neither. I mean, shouldn't it be Destiel? Really? That's your issue with this? No, of course it's not my issue. You know, how about Sastiel? Sam Steel. Okay, all right. You know what? You're going to do that thing where you just shut the hell up forever. Cast Dean? Shut your face. Get in the car. It's just a tad different than when he dozed off, Kay. What do you mean, different? Hey, Seacrest. Guess what? Not a nurse. Just playing one on TV. Supernatural, scene 36, take one. Marker. Action. Balthazar is no hero. But he knows Raphael will never take him back. Manager, and that was just a. The Jeopardy check. It's feeling a little thin, low stakes. It's fun to hear the boys' voices, but a story is only as good as its villain, and these villains are just not feeling very dangerous. Not to mention, there's no classic rock, no one even mentions Cass. The climax is a little stale. Boys tied up again while we get the villain's monologue, which frankly isn't one of your best. A little originality wouldn't hurt. They're pretty obscure. I mean, almost zero circulation. Uh, started in 05. Publisher put out a couple dozen before going bankrupt. And uh, the last one, No Rest for the Wicked, ends with you going to hell. I reiterate, freaking insane. Oh, check it out. There's actually fans. There's not many of them, but still. Did you read this? Yep. 
Although for fans, they sure do complain a lot. Listen to this. Simpatico says the demon storyline is trite, cliched, and overall craptastic. Yeah, well, screw you, Simpatico. We lived it. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep on reading. Gets better. There's Sam girls and Dean girls, and what's a Slash fan? As in Sam slash Dean together. Like together together? Yeah. They do know we're brothers, right? Doesn't seem to matter. Oh, come on. That that's just sick. What are they doing? Oh, uh, they're rehearsing the BM scene. The bow movement scene? No. There's the boy melodrama scene. You know, the scene where the boys get together and they're they're driving or leaning against baby, drinking a beer, sharing their feelings. The two of them, alone, but together. Bonded, united. The power of their Why are they standing so close together? Uh, reasons. You know they're brothers, right? Well, duh. But... Subtext. Why don't you take a sub-step back there, ladies? Well, we can clean up, reset the window. It takes about 95 minutes, basically. So we'd have to blow off the scene where they sit on the Impala and talk about their feelings. Ha! <laughs> right. You answer the hate mail. I get it. He's a fan. A fan. Yeah. You're a fan. Look, just because you're hot for Metatron or, <laughs> or Bieber or Beckham, just because you know everything about them doesn't mean that you actually know them. Or that they even know you exist. Oh, that's cold. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Where the hell are we, anyway? Dude, we're not even in America. You can't eat me. See, I'm not a Paris Hilton BFF. I've never even seen House of Wax. There is no other road. No other way. No day. But today. Did he just quote Rent? Not enough to get us in trouble. Now you get out. I'm confused. Why aren't you dead? I don't know. What do you want to be? Because I can help with that. All right, enough. The things I put you through. The physical beatings alone. Yeah, we're still in one piece. I killed your father. I burned your mother alive. And then you had to go through the whole horrific deal again with Jessica. Chuck. All for what? All for the sake of literary symmetry. I toyed with your lives, your emotions for entertainment. You didn't toy with us, Chuck, okay? You didn't create us. Did you really have to live through the bugs? Yeah. What about the ghost ship? Yes, that too. I am so sorry. I mean, horror is one thing, but to be forced to live bad writing. You know, I know it's really uncool to say this, but I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I love Jim Boogeyman. Oh, God, what a terrible script. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Yeah. All right, who puts a 300-gallon aquarium in their trailer? Barely Jensen Ackles. So now, uh, what's the deal with all this TV crap? Pardon? Yeah. Hey, man, Pat Lecky. Uh, Lecky. What? Lecky, I'm pretty sure. Man, they put out new pages? Hey, what? I mean, is this some kind of cosmic joke? Yeah, because if it is, it's stupid and we don't get it. Yeah. You guys okay? Give me that. What is... These are words in the script. This isn't Cass. Look at him. You guys want to run lines, or...? His name's Misha. Misha? Oh, wow. Great. Misha? Jensen? Let's put the names around here. Uh, you guys? You really punked me. <laughs> I'm totally gonna tweet this one. Hola, mis amigos. J squared got me good. Really starting to feel like one of the guys. I am H O. J and J had a late one last night. 
I'm sitting in a laundromat reading about myself, sitting in a laundromat reading about myself. My head hurts. It's gonna be something this guy's not telling us. Sam tossed his gigantic darks into the machine. He was starting to have doubts about Chuck, about whether he was telling the whole truth. Stop it. Stop it, Sam said. Guess what you do next? Sam turned his back on Dean, his face brooding and pensive. I mean, I don't know how he's doing it, but this guy is doing it. I can't see your face, but those are definitely your brooding and pensive shoulders. You just thought I was a dick. That's good. You really think it's wise to be drinking on the job? What show you been watching? I can't believe you've come back. I, I, I didn't mean what I said about Supernatural. It's underrated, due for a reboot. For the disappearance. There is no singing in Supernatural. There's no space in Supernatural. Well, not canonically, no, but this is transformative fiction. You mean fan fiction? Call it whatever you like, okay? It's inspired by Carver Edlin's books. With a few embellishments. How'd you learn all this? I'm a writer too, Chuck. Uh, I mean, fanfic. It's not really the same thing. Writing's writing. You're Sam Winchester, and you're... not what I pictured. I'm Becky. I've read all about you guys, and I've even written a few. <laughs> Beyond this illusion, I was sorry Who's that? Oh, that's Adam, John Winchester's other kid. He's still trapped in the cage in hell with Lucifer. Yeah, man. Dad loved this thing. I like this you, Castillo. It's very Russian. I'll fly up and talk to them. You know, I'm not sure Jared and Jensen know who she is, strictly speaking. She's, you know. No offense. Right. Yeah, I think what we might need at this stage is for Kripke to come up himself. Uh, he created this show. They'll listen to him. <laughs> that make me look? I'm supposed to be running this thing. Besides, Eric's off in some cabin somewhere writing his next pilot. He sold Octacobra? Yes. Mother of God. They'll buy anything. Velma was right. I was a shady real estate developer after all. It's not fair. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <gasps> he said it. He what? said the line. <clears throat> what are you doing? Well, I mean, at the end of every mystery, Scooby looks into the camera and he says, Dean, you're not a talking dog. I know that. I... Yeah. Anyway, as far as I can see, I think they've lost any shred of talent they ever had. All the other worlds, alternate realities, the subplots, the failed spin-offs. It's time to start canceling shows. Was the Winchesters grabbing me part of your plan? That was a surprise. But hey, what writer doesn't love a good twist? My job is to set up interesting characters and see where they lead me. The byproduct of having well-drawn characters is they may surprise you. But I know something they don't know. The ending. How I get there doesn't matter as long as everybody plays their part. Endings are hard. Any chapped ass monkey with a keyboard can poop out a beginning, but endings are impossible. You try to tie up every loose end, but you never can. The fans are always gonna bitch. There's always gonna be holes. And since it's the ending, it's all supposed to add up to something. I'm telling you, they're a raging pain in the ass. No. 
you can't. I did. You're... This is just an ending. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna get there. But I know where I'm going. But, but it's so... dark. But great, right? I can see it now. Supernatural. The end. And the cover is just a gravestone. It says... Winchester. Fans are gonna love it. Well? It's awful. Horrible. It's hopeless. You can't do this to the fans. What you did to Dean? What you did to Sam? There, see? It's making you feel something. That's good, right? No! No doubt, endings are hard. But then again, nothing ever really ends, does it? Let's see. Where's Chuck? Oh, I, I love him. I do. But honestly, the whole author inserting themselves into the narrative thing, it's just not my favorite. I kind of hate the meta stories. Me too.